Good morning, good morning. How are you today? What's your favorite rambling redhead? It's a uh, beautiful Monday morning. I'm out here with the idiots. And uh, just getting ready to get started for the day. We, um, we're going to start our gardens today and get them all uh, up and running. It's going to take a few hours, hopefully. It's not too big of a process. So I'm thinking I'm going to go pick up my new saw stand today and finish that. And... Uh, clean up some uh, we uh, got my middle son a loft bed so you can have a little bit more space in that front bedroom um, so you can put a computer and stuff underneath it so I got to break down his old bed frame today but um, yeah we're gonna actually you know before anything else let me walk y'all inside and let y'all see the uh, finished project of the living room so here it is all the uh, decorations are up now Couches are in here, the rug, the trays, the dog bed that matches, and the shelf. So that shelf was a little bit of an adventure to uh, make. It was the last major piece for this room. We got the rest of the trim up. I guess I do still need to seal it. And um, we got some stuff that we're going through that's got to go put, it, put away in the shops today, shop in the barn. But yeah, the shelf was a bit of an adventure. Um, and I recorded it. So here's that. Alright, so the way this uh, shelf is going to work is so I have this 2 by 8 It's going to be a floating shelf here in a minute. Well, a little bit. But I'm going to cut a 2 inch strip off one side of it. I'm going to bore some 1... probably 1 and a half inch deep holes. I'm thinking 1 and a half is probably going to be the move. And put this uh, 3 quarter inch dowel through those with matching holes on the other six inch wide side, five and a quarter inch wide side. Um, these will be glued into the back side and then when we go to assemble the whole thing, I'll glue these, we'll hammer it all in and la di da -di everybody, we have a permanently installed floating shelf. Um, anyway, that's the way it's supposed to work. We're, we're gonna find out if I actually get it to work that way or not, but um, paddle bit, hammer drill, chop saw, drill some three inch screws this should be a pretty simple project uh, once I get it all in place all right so I've got it cut down to the 134 inches to fit the wall and then you can see I've marked it every 13 inches which gives me I think it's 11 dowels to go in it so I'm gonna go cut these three quarter dowels down that'll be next and then I will I've got my uh, rip cut here set up I can cut it down to the width that I need. Got a dog hiding in my shop. Yeah, I see you down there. Um, got this Craig jig to uh, for rip cutting things. And I'm going to try out for the first time, so that'll be interesting. So, I'm going to get this done, cut, get the dowels cut, and then I'll get back with you before I start marking and doing holes. So that cut there is right where my cut's going to be. Now approximately glued in, so it'll be on this line here, but will be the dowels will go just like that. One inch in that way, two inches in the other. Then I'll probably set a screw right through the top there to hold the whole thing together because I'm not gluing this side in case I ever need to be able to pull it off. So I've got the uh, saw set up in here. Throw y'all back on the tripod and we'll get it cut. Okay, so this is interesting. 
but I cut right through the bow. The um, the right side of this board is four and a quarter or four and three quarters all the way through. But all the bow in this wood was apparently right here in the middle. I'm sure you could see that when I was cutting. But I think it's still going to work. I'm going to go ahead and continue the process as if it, this didn't happen. And hopefully I can just get it to uh, hammer back together when I put it together. But yeah, that's interesting that it, I've nailed the bow like that. All right. So I've transferred my scribe marks to go all the way across to the tops. And then marked exactly three quarter, which is the center of the board. All the way down, just using my uh, square here. Nice solid line. And then what I would do is I'll set that on the board. Set my pencil right against my mark. And physically push to make the mark. Obviously, that's not what I'm going to right. It's going one-handed, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go through now and pop some uh, pilot holes for this auger bit and all those. Also forgot to mention, but I do have the uh, bit marked at two inches there so I know when to stop and I don't blow through the bottom of this bad boy. down I can just get them in there just barely so once it's on the wall hopefully this actually the shorter side will be screwed into the wall with the pegs all the way seated in it but hopefully I will be able to hammer this guy flat against this one against the wall using the wall to hammer against because um, these will obviously be standing out like this go into these like pocket um, these will be glued in here and if I need to I can shoot a screw through the top of this guy that you won't be able to see when the shelf's in use or the bottom depending on where it's gonna be height wise yeah that is there we go we're trucking right along here all right so next step wood glue I got gorilla brand brand this year but um, I'm wood gluing in the pegs and they're pretty tight um, some of them are a little looser than others, kind of how a spade bit works. They like to walk a little bit. A whole bunch of glue, hammer these guys in there. Then I'm going to go inside and mark this thing on the studs, drill it, or pre-drill it, uh, anchor it into the studs, and we should be ready to slide on that shelf, hopefully. All right, well, after thinking about it for a minute, I'm actually going to let that dry overnight. This glue's got a 24-hour setup time on it. So... We'll let that set up overnight and uh, come back tomorrow and yeah, then we will uh, pre-drill some holes and countersink some screws, set this thing into the studs and um, have a shelf. So hopefully it works. My uh, teenager is very skeptical about it working, but I think it's going to be cool. I'm excited about it. All right, so it's the next day. Got the uh, pegs are all in here nice and tight and they're going on this wall. So as with the rest of the walls in this house, the studs appear to be in some really wonky, weird places. So I'm going to pre-drill two of them in, get them shot in there, get it on the wall, and then go down the wall and mark the uh, rest of the stud locations, drill them, and put them in, in place. Because um, I can't trust that these studs are 16 inches on center, apparently. I've got one at 14, I've got one at like 6. I don't know what's going on in there. I never do. I probably should have done this before I put the... Uh, base mold down so that I could have seen the studs but oh well here we are what? all right so as you can tell we've got a little bit of a bow a, a bow here the but bow. The bow. Yeah, let's see you can see it. yeah you can see it real well there this is the piece that had the bow in it when I cut it off but my uh, coat rack is looking great up here <laughs> my studs marked you can see that's nowhere near 16 inches. These um, pegs are 13 inches apart, so they should have cleared all the studs, but, well, that didn't work out. 
So I'm just gonna get these pre-drilled and get screws in them so they're level. All right, and there we go. They're sank into all the studs here. The bow on this end was pretty bad, so it kind of made it difficult to get screws in there, but we are flat up against the wall. And uh, we're gonna go grab the shelf now, toss it on here, see how that looks. All right, well, don't you have a look at it? Oh, that's my light. It's a good look. Unfortunately, just can't get past that bow. So there's a gap down the middle there. Tried and tried and tried. I've ratchet strapped it. It's about the tightest I can get it was down here. Um, just to hold it exactly where it's at. But yeah, well, it's a strong shelf. But unfortunately, it's got a little gap in the middle of it. And I'm sure once there's stuff on there, you won't be able to see. Um, but yeah, that's just coming from the uh, bowling of this wood, unfortunately. I guess I could have bought a higher quality beam that uh, didn't have such a bow in it, but this is the one we bought. I learned some things. We gonna, one of these days I'll do another one and I'll try again. But this one will work for now. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm excited about the look of it. And it was the last thing we gotta do in here. I gotta sweep up back there, but yeah, there's our shelf. So I'm quite happy with the shelf. And as you can tell from the room, the gap doesn't even exist, so. We are uh, about to take the teenager off to work. He's a lifeguard at an indoor water park here in Grand Prairie. Um, then we're going to Home Depot, pick up the supplies to build this uh, garden for my wife. It should be pretty good. It's just a flat container garden. We're doing uh, drip irrigation in it, and I have it set up, I think, so that I'll be able to do a hoop house over it if we get another frost for um, Easter. So. I'll be back with you guys here in just a little bit after we get back from the Home Depot. All right, so we're out here at the garden center. We've been talking about it. And uh, so we're doing a container garden with uh, Home Depot buckets and such that we're building today. We decided we're doing 16 buckets, but I'm going to, uh, we're gonna do starter plants, 12 of them, um, as well as starter plants for all of my wife's herbs that she's doing a different planter for. And then we're going to plant because we bought heirloom seeds two years ago that we've just not had a ton of success with so we're going to plant those in four of the buckets um, and just give them one more shot because according to their expiration this is their last year anyway um, but yeah so she's picking out some plants i got a peach tree my grandparents used to have a peach tree and um, i always loved the peach tree so i've got one it's over there in my cart can't see it in the sun but um, also good news here in a month or so I'm uh, upgrading this and getting a new camera so in like four videos hopefully you'll see that that'll be way better than doing this on my phone because while doing it on the phone works it's not really the best situation but yeah we've already been to Walmart and Costco to get gas uh, gas prices are super high right now for well they're not super high but for what I like to pay they're super high uh, so using the Costco discount a little better the Costco card Went over Harbor Freight and finally picked up my saw stands for the miter saw. I bought one at Christmas, got it home, missing parts, and then they didn't have any more in stock. Um, finally picked one of those up this morning. Got a new microwave because my youngest turned a bag of popcorn into uh, tar in our microwave while we're cooking it extensively, so we're having to replace that guy because that smell just won't go away. Um, yeah, just out here running around. Her windshield's got to get replaced this afternoon. I uh, got Schaefer's Auto Glass coming out to the house, so I'm running around a little more, pick up some more good stuff. Some onions, I think we need some onions. Anyway, we'll be back with y'all at the house. Said it before, and I will say it again. The 90s Suburban is the ultimate contractor vehicle. You can just fit everything into the 90s Suburban. All the plants, all the stuff we got at Walmart, and two people. Even a peach tree. All right, we're gonna get this unloaded. All right, we're back home, we're fed, and um, 
setting up my new cut station there now. They're about to start working on the buckets, so all the buckets will get holes drilled in the bottom of them for water to drain out. They'll get a couple inches of gravel, and then they will get, we're going to use spirally drill bits. I'm, I'm not sure what other kind there are, but th these will be done with spirally ones. So we have all the bedding and the birds and compost in these bins from the last few months. Uh, well, we got last year, I guess, since we got them. We got them around Easter last year. Um, so we saved all that and broken it down. So the buckets will get holes, and they'll get gravel. Then they'll get the uh, bedding stuff, the mix, compost. And then the top of it will be the potting soil for the plants to actually live in. Um, so yeah, they're going to get started on popping holes and all that. I'm going to finish setting up this saw station and start cutting wood to uh, build this thing. All right, so the saw stand is great. It's way better than my uh, wompy table over there. And now we can resurface the table this year. So that'd be nice. There's our top layer. My wife is getting the, oh, she's got Drake over here working on it now. Digging out all our filler. Just filling these guys up. So it gets about that much of our compost bird bedding in it. The rocks. We are trucking right along. Well, apparently these two decided to do some excavation. And then our guard duck uh, decided to protect them. We're not laying eggs over here in the sawdust. Goofies. Robert, get off of those. There's nails on that. But we are moving right along over here. Got my four legs and my one piece of wood that's left over. And this is all said and done. But, uh, the frame, this will be the top. Four foot in the center, 52 and three quarters both sides. And a three inch, I think it's three inch deck, exterior deck screws. Same thing here, four foot, 52 and three quarter. And this will sit down underneath to support the bottoms. They are uh, getting the dirt going on over here. Deacon's doing a great job putting in screws. Learning life skills at home school. Drake's over here doing math. up all our buckets. Alright, I stepped away for uh, two minutes. Got Schaefer's Auto Glass out here replacing the windshield in my wife's Suburban because the Texas blizzard cracked it. But I think it's almost got the uh, base together. Top's done. One more bag of uh, potting mix has to go in there. 
Looks like we got one bag, bag of uh, rocks and two bags of mix left for this, for my tree, and then for the herbs. So we're doing pretty good. All right, and there it is. She looks like all put together. We got one uh, four foot two by four left over. Drake almost died trying to jump the barrels just now. But they'll drop right in here. All so coordinated. But yeah, all the barrels just drop right in here. We're ready to start putting in plants. All right. Nice, lovely coat of red going on to match the barn and the chicken coop and Strike's favorite color. There's a little bit of my pants because it wasn't closed all the way. But everything else is ready to go in. All right, so okay. here we go. Where did Sweet Million go? I'll paint it up. First pot is in there with our beefsteak tomatoes. They are down here going through their chart and figuring out where everything's going to go now. We are uh, going to go ahead and put our tomato cages on the big on the tomatoes as we do them. And here is everything else that's going in. A lot of stuff. I'm about to uh, go get my pot and start on my peach tree. So I've also ordered a uh, drip irrigation kit so there will be irrigation lines. The uh, water hose essentially will hook up to a little box down here on this leg with a timer that will then send water down, up, <laughs> down, then up so that branching off through there to each plant so that a uh, timer will run at probably about 5 a.m. and give each plant, I don't know how much time it'll get water, but basically they'll each have their own little sprinkler head for each one so that this guy right here, little timer, it's battery powered. Um, we'll get mounted up there and it'll give each one of those little guys a uh, predetermined amount of water to the whole thing. And they'll each get their own little sprinkler head so that they get just the right amount of water. And we can um, protect them, feed them, you know, be out in the sun. They're almost, they'll have almost full sun. If we end up needing to block some sun from them, I'm going to run some PVC pipes across the top here. For example, when Easter time gets here and we get our second winter, I'll be covering these guys up for a couple of days kids for a couple of days just to um, help them out when it gets cold again but Drake came and put me bedding down for the birds I gotta blow this backyard off and it'll have to be mowed soon I think I got their last batch of this sawdust bedding before they go to uh, straw well, we'll go back to straw because I like that better but yeah we're gonna get this thing loaded down and I'm gonna get my peach tree in its pot so I'll get back with you all right, that's all done. Got the fence up because the birds just couldn't leave the strawberries down there underneath alone. And they liked playing in the bottom of my peach tree. All the plants are in, it's up high enough they can't get to it. Fence is up, keep them out anyway. The, uh, the chickens can jump that high. But a little gate on there. And uh, I just kind of cleaned up the backyard now. They're over there putting the um, herbs in the herb dish. Or herb garden, what do you want to call that? They're working on, and uh, I think that's gonna about do it. I think we're gonna have fire tonight, and that'll be about it. Go get some dinner. Oh, here come our goat, our herbs. Let's go see what's going on in there. Lots of herbs. Look at all my herbs and my happy wife. She totally wants to be on camera. <laughs> I don't know where this is going, man, but it's going. Put it over there by the peaches. But, but uh, yeah, we got that all done. I'll be doing the irrigation here in the next couple days when that shows up. And I don't know. I got some other projects to work on for next week. But until uh, then, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been your favorite rambling redhead. See you later. Bye.